All right. Well, I don't know why, but I've got a lot of trepidation going into this chapter. I'm just... I feel bad for Eva. I feel like a lot's gone on with him and his confidence taking major blows lately. Adding to that, that now he's a fury and has a lusty demon arm. And I'm just, I don't know, I've just got a bad feeling. <laughs> I don't know what the feeling's trying to tell me, but I'm, I'm kind of worried just sitting down to record this right now. I don't know why. Hopefully we just get more Takeda being crazy, because that'll make me feel better. <laughs> But I just have a bad feeling about Eva right now, and I'm like, mm, I feel like he's gonna snap. All right. Over time, it was getting easier for Eva to move around the house, and his scar tissue was forming around his tender wounds after weeks of waiting. My, what a relief. I was beginning to fear the worst, but I'm happy to see my fears were unfounded. There's no doubt in my mind that Yukimura's tireless care nursed you back to health. No, it's not like that. My cheeks felt hot as Motoyama poked fun at me and I puckered my lips from embarrassment. Mm. Eva, on the other hand, was in no mood to joke. Oh no, Eva, don't! Don't go to the dark side. Motoyama, who are the Yugeki units still remain? Can you provide me with a status report? Well, those who survived have reconvened with Captain Enomoto and have joined his expedition to sail up north. North. Thankfully for us, a resistance faction has formed in the Tohoku region to counter the Empire of Japan's rising tide of oppressive nationalism. The self-proclaimed Northern Alliance is working hard to mobilize a standing army against the Imperials. I had expected news of a growing resistance would have comforted Eva in his troubled state, but... Hmm. He merely plopped into a chair and slumped over. Like, yeah, I don't think he's doing too hot right now. With the fragments of the Yugeki unit sailing north to join a desperate resistance, he was, once again, made into something of a spectator. I glanced at Moriyama, who could only shrug back. Even if Iba were allowed to break his vow and enter the fray, his injuries left him unfit for combat. It was an unenviable position, and I could see the frustration on his face as he gritted his teeth. Tell me, how was Zeta holding up? Not great. As soon as Edo Castle was handed over, the Imperial soldiers have been strutting around the town like they own the place. Dr. Matsumoto said the same exact thing. According to him, anyone even remotely affiliated with the Shogunate is arrested and subjected to interrogation. It's a bleak situation. Aye. Though I remember the Shinsengumi doing something quite similar in Kyoto, if you recall. It appears the tables have turned, and we are all being made to suffer the consequences. Wait, what about you? Are you going to be safe? Luckily for myself, only a few people are aware of my relation with the Yugeki unit. Ah, I see. That's good to hear. However, if our current predicament does not relent, returning to Edo will prove to be impossible. That it will. Promise not to act rashly, will you? There have been some terrible rumors floating around Edo. Murders in the streets. Murders? Yes, they are grisly as well. I can barely stomach listening to them. Supposedly, the bodies, or what remains of them, have been hacked into piled chunks of flesh. <gasps> Gruesome murders, bodies reduced to bloody viscera? It was a familiar tale, one that I thought had been left behind in Kyoto several months ago. Back then, the murders had been pinned on the Shinsengumi's infamous Fury Corp, but... They were nowhere near Edo. Not for several months now. My stomach sank as the realization set in. I felt suddenly lightheaded, and Eva continued on. 
Has the Imperial Army been neglecting their duty in solving the murder cases? Rather odd, isn't it? I thought something similar, but... Perhaps they are intentionally turning a blind eye. For example, one might suggest that the murders are in cooperation with the Satsuma Choshu. Perhaps. Years ago, I had heard that Father had worked closely with members of the Imperial Nationalist Party, in particular by experimenting on some of its Ronin. I feared that, if the offenders weren't the Shinsengumi's own Fury Corps, perhaps it was Takeda or Father's doing. Eva, I simply cannot urge you enough. Please do not act rashly, at least for my sake. All that matters for now is that you focus on recovering from your injuries, okay? Okay. Understood. Yukimura, be a dear and make sure to keep an eye on Eva, would you? He has a bad habit of taking matters into his own hands when left unattended. I'm quite familiar. He's safe with me. Glad to hear it. I cannot explain it, but Eba seems to pay a little more attention when you speak. Ah, before I forget, I've transported an amount of funds here for your discretion from Eba's home. Hopefully this makes things easier, so feel free to take from it in times of need. Wow, thank you so much. How generous of you. Alright. Well, I'm heading back to Edo, then. If anything occurs, you'll be the first to know. Okay. Thank you. Motoyama bowed politely and exited the house. Hmm. As I glanced over at Iba, it seemed as though a dark cloud was floating above his ha hunched head. Haunched? <laughs> I searched for something insightful to say, but... Offering to bring levity in this room might only make things worse, so I refrained from speaking. Good choice. Just when I thought he, he was about to speak... No! All of a sudden, Eva fell out of his chair, warping his face in pain as he gasped for air. Eva? Okay, it actually is bloodless this time, not the arm. Color began slowly fading from his hair, and each strand turned white from the follicle up. There was no mistaking it. This was bloodlust. Very quickly. <laughs> Let's just get into the giving of the blood. Eva, please! Drink my blood! W w what are you s saying? I c can't! If you drink my blood, your bloodlust will die down! Your gashes might heal sooner, too! B besides, I need you. If your mind deteriorates before we see Takeda again, there's no telling what he'll do to us. Mm. Trepidation plagued Eva, and he bit his lip as he hastily darted his eyes away from me. Arguing about this would only prolong his suffering, and we were running short on time. He left me with no other choice again. I drew my kadachi from out of its sheath and cut a tiny sliver across the side of my neck. As the sharp edge of the blade broke through my skin, I winced, causing thick drops of blood to slide from the fresh cut. Eva, please! I felt my voice crack as I pleaded with Eva, and he finally stepped towards me, albeit hesitantly. My body shivered as Eva placed his icy hand upon my stomach, and after drawing me in closely, he wrapped his moist lips around the bloody incision. So that's where your other hand is. Interesting. What has become of me? Fate has a cruel sense of humor. It's ironic that the only way I can protect you is by putting you in harm's way, that I can only save you by absorbing your life force into my own. In pain, shallow breaths, Eva's voice murmured soft words burdened by his regret. As he went on, his hand gripped me tighter. I, I hadn't become a fury just to let you hurt yourself for my sake. His tongue flicked at the viscous droplets of blood as he vented irritably into my ear, and with each successive gulp, his breath seemed to steady. Though, his nagging sense of sorrow was a little tough to swallow as he pressed our bodies together. Would offering him my blood only drive him away? I chose not to answer just yet in fear of the truth. 
Like, you can either drive him away or he goes insane and gets driven away. So either way, it's not good. Our life, lived in seclusion, was composed of dull, lengthy days where not much had happened. Fortunately for ourselves, no Imperial soldiers patrolled near our estate in Yokohama, but... Such is the nature of reclusivity that we knew we were at the mercy of our circumstances, and we had no choice but to cope with it. Sorry for taking so long, Eva. The market was a little busier today than usual. Before I start dinner, why don't we wrap you in some fresh bandages, hmm? I called out to him, pulling all of the ingredients I'd purchased from out of my basket, but... When I glanced over at Eva, he was preoccupied, lost in the swirl of his thoughts. It took him another minute to acknowledge my arrival. Chizuru. Um, yes? What is it? How much longer do you plan on staying here? His question was unexpected, and its curtness sank like a cold dagger pierced into my chest. What do you mean, how much longer? I was unable to think of a response off the cuff, so I hoped he would clarify to buy myself more time, but he merely offered a blank stare. Okay, well, I had been planning to take care of you until your injuries had fully recovered, Eva. In all honesty, I desired nothing more than to remain at his side even after his recovery was complete. It's funny that he's like, how long are you going to stay here for? Didn't Toshi leave her in your care until further notice? So, huh? However, judging from his aloofness, and certainly after hearing how he posed the question, I was far more reluctant to let him know my true feelings. Fair? Pardon me for recalling this bitter memory, but you remember what Takata had said, don't you? Because of his appendage, he spoke of cravings, ones that took shape in his dreams. Well, I was taken aback that Eva even had to ask. However, I didn't want to insult Eva by stopping him from making his point, so I feigned ignorance and thought a nod would suffice as an answer. Forgive me if what I say disturbs you. Okay, so he's going to try to drive her away because you know classic i'm your friend and protector and i don't want to change the status quo because i might lose you forever but i also can't see you with another guy but i also desire you yada 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 <laughs> so i'm gonna scare you away to protect you because like i always want to do i too am beginning to have those dreams as I toss and turn, I can see your face so clearly. I find myself inexplicably drawn to you against my will. The desire is insatiable. <laughs> These dreams range between amorous and carnal temptations, ones that consume me with guilt and longing in equal measure. My stomach fluttered as Eva confessed his strange, lewd thoughts. I kept my eyes fixed to the ground. Um, just a second, I need some water as well. I kind of wish he had picked some, a different way of phrasing that, though. Like, against his will. Like, you've been in love with this girl. Come on. I was frozen to the spot, hoping to soothe my nerves in full acknowledgement that I was blushing. Although, everything was starting to make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Looking back at it, it explained Eva's aggressive behavior all those months ago. Even then, it had felt out of character for a man of his stature. Even until now, retaining my sanity is becoming a difficult task. Madness beckons me, day by day. As time goes on, I fear that I may unwittingly do something that I'll live to regret. And so, it'd be for the best if you were to leave me be. Preferably as soon as possible. What? You expect me to abandon you after all that's happened? There's no way I could do that! Eva's eyes were wistful, furrowing above pinched lips. I couldn't imagine how tough it must have been to admit this, but I had to dissuade him either way. Hadn't you heard what Motoyama said? The Imperial Army is swarming all over Edo. 
We have no way of knowing if eventually they'll reach Yokohama, too. Besides, you aren't in any condition to fight on your own. Your wounds are still healing. What about my wounds? To hell with them! Can't you see that I would rather bleed to death than taint you with this accursed body? Cut me open, I do not care. Is that so hard to understand? I... I now realize that protecting you requires something that I am no longer fit to give. Eva clenched his fist, chewing on his lips so intensely, I was certain that he'd bite it off clean. Had I? I can't remember. It's so long ago. Did we ever, did any of us ever think that Eba might be a Yandere? I kind of feel like the thought has crossed my mind. I don't know if I expressed it vocally in one of these videos or if I'd talked about it with some of you guys in comments. But the way he phrased just that bit about, I mean, I've kind of mentioned it before about how he, she's like so perfect and he is not fit to be in her presence or breathe her air, basically. Like, that's, that's kind of Yandere-ish. Like, usually that's how Yandere's view the person they're interested in, and then they try to break them down to their level once they get obsessed enough. I'm... <laughs> what if Eva's a Yandere? Oh my god. We haven't really had that type yet in the game. Like, San... Not, not, not even... I thought Sanon was going to be like that, but he... Totally was not in the end. But it could be Eva. It's always a nice guys. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Let's keep going. Between the traumatic traumatic encounter with Takada and these changes occurring within him, Eva was in a state of mental duress, and any lesser man would have likely buckled from the pressure. But my role wasn't to judge, it was to support him. I don't like that the music stopped. I don't care. I don't care about what you might do to me, or whatever compulsions you have, Eva. Eva's eyes grew wide with surprise. Chizuru. Even if it wasn't what he'd wanted to hear, I thought it more important to express my feelings on the matter for him to know that I was ready to share his burden. A furious heartbeat raced inside of my chest. If you care to know, I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I left you behind. My well-being is the last thing on my mind, to be honest. So, if you could, please, let me stay with you for a little while longer. Oh. Eva was hesitant to answer right away. I carefully walked closer to him, keeping a fixed stare. Will you allow me to change your bandages? His demeanor was still cold and unmoving, save for the swift glance he gave me from his peripherals. <laughs> Eventually, he pulled up the tight fabric on his sleeves, exposing the fresh scar tissue covering his body. I grazed my fingertips along his skin, tracing a line with my hand as Eva looked at me inquisitively. Man, I just suddenly got, um, nameless chills. I don't know, well, I kind of know why. This reminds me exactly of the scene with Tay and um, the MC. I think they were in the infirmary. Remember she, like, grazed her knee? And I can't remember if he was putting a bandage on or take changing the bandages and they started poking at it. This kind of reminds me of that, but it's, like, reversed. Cheeseroo, don't you poke this man's wounds. <laughs> what if Cheeseroo was the end all along? Oh, no. All right, all done. You're free to put your clothes back on. 
I wrapped the blood-soaked bandages in an old cloth and called out to Eva in the other room. <laughs> it's been quiet for so long. I don't like this. Oh, no, I'm worried. You said that you don't care if I ever were to impose myself upon you. Is that correct? Huh? A sharp tone led me to believe that something was off, and as I turned around, instinctively... Okay, everybody hold my hand. Ugh. Uh, Eva's left hand lunged for me and thrust me onto the futon and pinned me down with his groin. Ah. Eh? Uh, um, Eva? His suddenness had caught me off guard, and my voice quivered as I squeaked his name. Hi. Eva looked me straight in the eye with a piercing gaze, and I could have sworn that they weren't his. Mm-hmm. Yep. Fear sank in the pit of my stomach. He's not really pinning you with his groin. He's kind of... Oh, the... A uh, bandage of the demon hand is off. Look at those nails. You just said so, didn't you? I've grown fearful of upsetting you, but the time has come for me to indulge in my idle fantasies. Don't be shy. Were you expecting all of what I had said to be a lie or something? I couldn't budge, and the more I wiggled, the more tightly he would pin my wrists. Ouch! At a reflex, I yelped in pain. Even as I struggled between his legs, Eva showed no signs of hesitation in keeping me restrained. Wow. Okay. We're, we're, we're doing this. Something eerie lurked behind those cold, glassy eyes. Something akin to madness. Oh boy, it's been a while since I've seen the glassy eyes. But the muscles in his face didn't budge. I just looked into his eyes, watching the war wage between his sense of propriety and his animalistic desires. If he were to submit to those impulses, and if he were to take me here and now, I would... Yeah? Then, Eva's face gradually started moving close to mine, the suspense from which made me shiver. He began nibbling on my face, which tickled as he softly dragged his lips in a curve from my cheek to behind my earlobe. How come I don't get a picture of this? Uh-oh. She's getting into it. With my arms pinned, there was nothing I could do to stop him, and he began taking deep whiffs of my scent through his nose. I wondered if it would be better to let it happen and... I refrained from struggling just to get it over with. <laughs> Chaseru! Eva was at the mercy of his demon hand, so as I had promised, it was imperative for me to separate his actions from these demonic impulses accordingly. Oh, I can't believe it took a freaking demon hand for you guys to uh, act on anything. Oh, no. It's fine. We're fine. We're, we're, we're getting through it. Why aren't you resisting me? Have you chosen to surrender your flesh for my pleasure alone? Me? The one who lost the Takeda in battle? His voice was restrained, teetering upon a whisper. Even so, I could sense the potent rage that gave him grief that screamed from the depths of his soul. I'm still trying to figure out if it's him? Like, because I could also see him going to this extent. Like, seeing how far he can push her for her to realize, oh, no, you're a monster, I want out. Or if it is him just, like, the, the demon hand taking more and more control. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> or a mixture of the two. <laughs> Even if these were his honest feelings, and I had put myself at risk by willfully remaining by his side... Nothing was worth leaving him, and I couldn't be convinced otherwise. It was why I... I gave up, and I let him have his way with me. Chizuru. His grip loosened as his hands began to quiver. 
We shared a tense minute of silence, and Eva heaved a heavy sigh from what I presumed was regret. Oh. Eva had released me from under him at last, and he sheepishly stood back up as he muttered softly. I apologize profusely. I must kindly ask you to leave me alone for now. I... I am unsure if I can stand to look at you at this time. There are things I cannot explain. Without another word, I patted all the wrinkles out of my clothes and sauntered out of his door. Girl, how you be sauntering at a time like this? Just before leaving, I turned to look over my shoulder. Eva. Does it really help being alone? As expected, my question fell on deaf ears, and I left his room without hearing another peep from him. <sighs> ah! I, man, I can't believe that feeling of trepidation was, um, was real. <laughs> it wasn't for naught. Oh boy. All right. Luckily for myself, I needed to travel to the Yokohama street market to shop for some ingredients. Girl just go out, goes out shopping after that. <laughs> like, eh, it's just another Tuesday. While I appreciated the reprieve from the growing familiarity of the house, I was more so interested in a chance to get some much-needed space from Eva. If Eva hadn't wanted me, then who else would? Oh no. It was one thing for me to call myself a burden, but something else entirely once it came from Eva's mouth. Had I overstayed my welcome? <laughs> my heart squeezed inside of my chest as I imagined the thought of us being separated from one another. He was the moon drifting in my heart's vast sky. Well, that's very romantic and sweet of you, but girl. I was beginning to think that I... As the thought crossed my mind, a brash voice startled me as I ambled beside some produce. You there! Just what do you think you're doing? <laughs> a frightening chill traveled through my spine as I recognized a voice barking in the distance. Once I had realized who was speaking, I blocked my face with my hand, hoping that he wouldn't see me. Hey, it's none of your business, wise guy. Who the hell are ya anyway? Oh no! A chance encounter with the rival. Why does Takada always start crap wherever he goes? All the time. This isn't because he he's a fury and has a demon hand either. He was like this when he was a human. Okay. Well, this could get interesting. Oh ho. Big mistake, my friend. Looks like someone needs to teach you some manners. I've got special orders to investigate and apprehend any possible shogunate conspirators hidden around the city. And you look real suspicious. I think I'm going to have to take you into custody. What a shame. What? You, you bastard! Arrest him, boys! If my memory serves correctly, he looks like one of those fellas from the Shogi Company that caused trouble here the other day. With a wave of his hand, Takada ordered a pl platoon of grunts clad in western-styled uniforms and pointed straw hats to bind the hands of the Ronin. Under their hats, their eyes glowed a faint shade of crimson. Without a doubt, those were furies. The longer I waited here, the bigger the chance of Takuda finding me. I eyed a narrow passageway and ran low to the ground, hoping not to be detected. Now not even Yokohama was safe. I needed to alert Iba and hurry back to the house. He's not gonna listen to me, though. This is gonna be trouble. Just as the safe house's door came within view... Hey! You there! Halt! An Imperial soldier barked at me, causing me to slip into a state of total panic. Hmm. Might you be the new resident here? 
One of the local folks around here told me that somebody new had moved in, and here you are. Y yes sir, I am. What's your business here? You'd better be honest. We don't tolerate shogunate apologists here. Uh, of course not, sir. Nothing suspicious going on here. Well, I'll be the judge of that. You're coming with me for questioning. Let's go! <laughs> oh no! Well, what will I tell Eva? Excuse me. If you don't mind, you seem to have apprehended one of my shop girls. It was. <gasps> Sam! Oh, girl, take me away from here. <laughs> I'm so glad to see you. Ah, uh, I need your help. Mind not handling her so roughly? Who the hell are you, lady? Well, I own a shop nearby. Because many of your colleagues frequent my shop, I suggest releasing her for your benefit. However, if you insist on disrespecting a member of my staff, you will never hear the end of it. As I'm sure you are aware, adding to problems on top of your unwanted occupation would likely rouse the townspeople to revolt, would it not? The soldier shot a glare at Sen, but she was totally unfazed. He looked over both of his shoulders and sighed, releasing me from his grip. Uh, huh. Tell her not to look so conspicuous next time, got it? You're free to go. For a while longer, he glared at both Sen and myself and continued along on his patrol. Can I hug you, please? My, I hadn't been sure if that would work. Talk about getting through by the skin of your teeth. Um, what are you doing here, Sen? You penned a letter to me, don't you recall? I'd been gravely concerned, but by the time I arrived, all of the Shinsengumi men had marched out of Edo. Eventually, it came to my attention that both you and Eva had gone somewhere else entirely, so naturally it took some time for me to track you. Oh gosh, I am so sorry. So much has happened since I last wrote you. No, there is nothing to apologize for. I am merely expressing myself, not scolding you. Sen tilted her head upwards, eyeing the scaffolding across the top of the house where I'd been staying. Kiku, you are free to come down now. Upon Sen's command, a cloaked shadow leapt down from the roof, joining, jolting me unexpectedly. Pleased to make your acquaintance again, Chizuru. Elated to see you are safe. Glad to see you are doing well too, Kimikiku. Pray tell, how is Eva doing? Well, I presume? Actually... Sun seemingly caught on to my hesitation, thinning her eyes as she spoke in a lower tone of voice. Very well. As we've discovered, staying outside is somewhat treacherous, so why don't we discuss inside? Okay, please come in. Both Sen and Kimigiku nodded and I ushered them in through the entrance gate. 